What happens to the wells at the end of the exploitation? This question must be analyzed very carefully, for there is an essential element which is of considerable importance in this new industry. This is the fact that hydraulic fracturing initiates the migration of methane in the whole volume of the Utica geologic unit. In fact, to embark on this industry now constitutes a large-scale experiment on the whole of the St. Lawrence Valley. In order to better understand what is at stake in this experiment, I propose another experiment, this one theoretical, in which someone decides to bury 20,000 propane tanks in a field. At the beginning, each tank is 80% full, and the purpose of the experiment is to discover the lifespan of the tanks. Each year, a sampling of the tanks is examined, and the number which have completely deteriorated is noted. At the beginning, there are a few cases, but the number increases over time. An average distribution bell curve, a pretty conventional statistical curve, is obtained. At the height of the deterioration curve is the average life of the tanks. Obviously, after a certain number of explosions, the dangerous madman who buried them is arrested and the attempt is made to clean up and demine the field. Let's take a look at a well. In the case of wells, the tank in question is a reservoir deep underground which has been linked to the surface that is less than a meter under the surface by the abandoned well which remains a conduit made of steel and cement grout. Around an initial vertical drilling, other lateral drillings may have been made. In periods of intensive exploitation, each of the platforms may receive six, eight, or even ten grouped lateral drillings from which the methane collects in one place. What will happen to these wells once abandoned? Multiplying the number of lateral drillings, one multiplies the risk of bringing the gas leaks to the initial site on the surface. A gas tank which contains 80% of its maximum capacity is about four cubic meters. On the other hand, an abandoned drilling site still containing 80% of its methane, which continues to flow, is more than 50 million cubic meters. If the madman's experiment with the propane tank seems harebrained, Imagine now the one Quebec wants to undertake of having 20,000 abandoned wells whose long-term behavior is unknown. The work will corrode over time and one fateful day will liberate the gas just as in the case of the tanks. We don't know how long the containment will last, but they will one day release the methane to the surface. A well seen in section, it is two steel tubes. The external casing leaves a space of about two centimeters, which I have left empty here between the rock and the wall of the tube. Thus, there is in the well shaft a space which is normally filled with cement grout. And between the two steel tubes, there is also cement grout. To seal a drilled well, a cement cap is put in place at the very bottom of at least 20 meters in length. And that cement can certainly last a generation or two. But what happens afterwards? What is the lifespan of these structures? We know exactly nothing about this. This is the reason why I say it is, it too is an experiment. The experiment is particularly worrying because of the fact that after abandonment, the Utica shale will, will still contain the 80% of the methane which was left underground. Hydraulic fracturing creates a network of fractures. The fracturing initiates a geologic process. The gas begins to migrate from the shale into the spaces and from the fractures to the well. The flow drops off rapidly in an exponential fashion, which means that after a few years, the well becomes unprofitable and it is closed. The gas reservoirs, shown here in green, are in fact volumes in which two one one hundredths of one percent of the space is occupied by the fissures produced by hydraulic fracturing. It is obviously very difficult to show in three dimensions, and that is the reason that the reservoirs in green are shown as simple volumes covered with a network of newly created fissures created by hydraulic fracturing. In each of these volumes, the geologic process will take thousands of years to liberate all of its gas. The wells, on the other hand, will not last that long. They have a lifespan, like all man-made structures. We don't know how long the span will be in this case, but when these 20,000 well structures eventually fail, what will happen? That is when the experiment will really kick in.
It has already begun in some newly constructed wells, which already show leaks all along their pipes. In fact, between the exterior tubing and the rock. The grout, even new, is already showing faulty manufacture in a number of cases. Imagine how these breakdowns will increase and intensify over the years. Once abandoned, these structures will be in the public domain. Each of these wells, as temporary works to extract gas, cost millions to construct, but less than 1% of that is spent to transform the well structures into permanent works for the completely opposite function, that is, of containing the gas in the reservoir. Transforming a work for a function that is the complete opposite to the one for which it was originally designed, and then investing so little means to ensure the durability of this work, is in fact experimenting. The wells are simply buried, abandoned, without inspection and without supervision. It is obvious that each one of these wells will pose major problems sooner or later, and will one day require treatment. Bridges and viaducts fall under the laws of engineering and are required to be maintained and are subjected to obligatory inspection, but not these wells, which are not subject to this law. This experiment must not be made, for the anticipated costs will far surpass the short-term profits.